Welcome to A Date with Danu right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today is a very special show. We are speaking about something that we are trying to incorporate into young minds. Love is love. Respecting everyone, understanding everyone and having that empathy within you to be a person who is contributing to society. Let's speak more about this as we move on with the show. Hi, my name is Ganguly. My name is Dimitri. And today we are going to go on dating with Dano. Dano. We are here today to speak about the society in general and how empathy and understanding has a, an impact on society and how we function. So I have two young ladies who are highly opinionated and that's what's wonderful about them. I'm happy to have Dimitri if you have not seen her. She's all over TikTok. She's like a TikTok sensation. She's like Pamela for TikTok. <laughs> Sad. I was expecting something. I didn't get it. And I'm like struggling to get over it. I can't believe I missed it. That's also my ego. Okay, it was just not good enough. Ilanga part I will do better. Let's try again. Don't want to reveal what it is. Put up superstition. What are open put a bag? But then at all you need to know is I have experienced a failure. It's okay, failures are normal. Next time. And also I have Ganguli. Uh I just wanted to say it right. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Hi what is that? A tattoo? Permanent? As much as a marriage. When you get things like this, your value goes down. Are you planning on trading me? Uh... Uh, so something that we want to, we have been trying to promote on this show is not only the the glamour or the type of people who will come where we'll have a good laugh and go back, but also thought-provoking shows that could lead into good conversation. On those lines, I wanted to bring this show up to speak about love is love. You know, this has become such a, uh, such a topic that a lot of people frown upon now, and they're like, oh, please, now it's enough now. Um, so in this equation where things have been so diluted, how would you describe love is love? You want to go first? <laughs> I mean, sure, all right. Um, well, Both of you are lawyers, right? By the yes. Way. Yeah. Yes, she's a practicing lawyer and I work at a company. Right, right yeah. super. Yes, <laughs> uh, love is love. Well, I think what we are talking about when, because again, as you mentioned, I am a lawyer and I tend to look at, I, I'd like to talk about the rights side yeah. of things. I think, yeah, love is love, definitely. And like from a societal responsibility side, definitely we have to be, I mean, that should be enough. I think mm. love is love. We can say love is love and that's, that's enough and that's the end of it. Mm. But, but that's usually not the case. I think in Sri Lanka, as we see right now, I think it's a, it's a topic that people are very uh, aware of right now at present the the right side of things like sure we understand love is love but does the legal side and does the country also accept that love is love and are people able to exercise that I mean uh, I think that's there's that disconnect there but yes I think if if we are able to all just be like yeah love is love and that's the end of it mm. I think that would be fantastic <clears throat> yeah from a personal standpoint it's just for me it's just one person caring for another person I don't I don't even think of it any wider than that it's just me loving you regardless of what you look like or what your gender is or what your sexuality is if like <clears throat> my heart aligns with yours I think that's just that's sufficient regardless of what anyone else says but like she says people look at it perceive it from like different angles legal being one of it and mm. is it really you know <laughs> accepted that is true now one of the reasons why I wanted to speak to you all is also about the content that you all put out <coughs> on your social platforms also speaks about the stereotypical thinking that Sri Lankans are left to think. And although we are modernizing that pattern of thinking and we are changing as the years move on, there's still a huge older community in our country and they still have a huge impact on the way we think and the way we behave. Now, during our parents' times, we didn't have gender fluid, uh, identifying themselves beyond the two categories of he, she and these forms that were filled were much easier. Yeah. But now it is becoming more and more complicated as we go on. We are, we are learning more and at the same time we are trying to find ways to utilize it. You tell me, are we following the whole European lifestyle or the Western world is doing it? Or are we saying, okay, this is what I was, I just realized? <coughs> 
I feel like <laughs> before we were colonized, I think we were more in line with this thought process mm. than we are right now. Um, so are we really following the Western thinking? So that's a question. But um, I don't know, for me, again, personally, you just, just empathize, you know, like regardless of who they are, what they are like, what their sexuality is, what their gender is, just, just stop cornering them. I don't think that's a Western philosophy. I think that's just, that's just integrity. That's just, I don't know, me as a person. And I don't think I'm following any thinking in that regard. Uh, you made a very solid point in one of your videos. You said, stop tolerating and start accepting. What would you say is tolerance today? Um, I think it's wider than it <laughs> used to be, but uh, to me, no one's doing anything intolerable. Like if, if a man is loving another man, I don't, I don't consider that intolerable personally. It's like, that, that, that's just two individual people. I have no business in that. So just let them be. Mm. That's it. That's, that's all I mean by that. I also don't think, I mean, tolerance shouldn't even be a word that we're using in this context, I think. We should simply be empathetic and understanding. And then in, in that scenario, I don't think tolerance is at all relevant. Yeah. Why do you, you don't have to tolerate anybody. They're living their lives and you are living yours. Hmm. Um, there's always conversation around the topic women. And women have uh, been in terms of it could be for domestic violence, it could be for gender-based violence, marginalizing women. These topics have been around for a long time and it's sad that we would talk about it in 2023. But uh, you all have spoken so much about it and you all are actively involved. Tell me about the projects that you all are involved in, in terms of women and their position in society. I think she is the best person to talk about <laughs> this because she's involved in so many great projects. Right. Um, I've, I've well, there's a bunch of things I could say, but I, I'd like to highlight one thing. Um, there is, uh, this is just a new movement. I'm, this is just personally what I'm part of. Um, we are part of a uh, women's network. Okay. Uh, it's called Women's Solidarity Network, which is, well, it's a space for women in general, but especially for, well, with the focus on queer women right now. Uh, just because um, if you look at the queer spaces, um, as it is for women in general, well, that the women's voices simply tend to get, you know, they don't really rise above the noise. It's the same in the queer spaces as well. So we're attempting to give queer women some uh, a voice, really, and to give them spaces and to allow them to socialize. Sometimes women do want spaces for, their, for themselves, you know, for safety and also just for... Uh, you know, to feel, to feel like a community. Mm. That's just something that we're doing right now. And how, what sort of, what sort of took you in creating this organization? This is actually, um, the organization really is because um, I do some legal consulting for LGBTQ organizations. And when I do go for these meetings, I very much, I'm aware of the, the people whose voices are heard and the other voices that tend to get drowned out. Not out of bad intentions, it's simply just how things happen sometimes. And I just thought maybe it would be nice to give uh, this space as well. Like, you know, just allow, just carve some kind of path. Um, it's not just myself, obviously, there are other people involved, but I am also part of this initiative. Amazing. All right, we need to get into a break. When we do come back, I'm going to be speaking about this element called abuse and isolating people out of conversation or even spaces. Now, we hear about it, but how does it actually happen? Where does it happen? Let's speak more. Understanding what the country needs and what community needs uh, are two different things because sometimes uh, in pocket communities there could be a lot of things happening that we are not aware of but as a whole we are trying to develop the country. Uh, if you don't sort of alternate these situations and put a system to it, it's very hard for us to look at the big picture. Now, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to speak to two young ladies who also have a big voice in this space that we call social media. You have the type of people who will do a dance to a TikTok, but you'll also have the type of people who speak about something. So they fall into this latter. <laughs> so um, I wanted to speak about, especially working in grassroots levels, you all would have come across abuse or 
lack of opportunity is given to people who are not in the framework of what society believes in. So, you know, marginalizing them or depriving them of opportunities. Tell me about your experiences on it. I think more than myself, Dimitri works in grassroots levels, but for me as like a person who does content on social media and in the um, area that I work in right now, I, I definitely see discrimination and I see people being cornered for their sense of being that I don't personally relate to but I empathize with because, because to me it's wrong, that's how I've, I've been raised. Um, so that's that's I don't know. To me, it's black and white. To me, it, what's wrong is wrong. If you're being, if someone's being cornered for their sense of being, to me, it's wrong. But uh, I'm sure Dimitri has a wider lens, wider perspective on that. Um, I think just just to uh, go off on like you know, you feel like it, things are black and white. Yeah. yeah, I think that does come because people are slaves to their biases, yeah. mm. and that really does come in when when they're working and you know in in day to day life, yeah. and. Uh, it really does come down to education and like you know practice empathy and understanding but um, also now in the work that I do with uh, well, mostly again it's legal work so in in the grassroots we tend to see a lot of like I mentioned that the the biases in practice mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a difficult thing to tackle right now what we can do is um, rely on policy and like really be people are, uh, you know like over the head with like mm -hmm. oh this, this is the policy this is what it says please try to stick to it sometimes you know we, we say that there's there's a lack of protection but really sometimes it tends to be the interpretation of that whatever protection is provided and also again the biases coming into play and like that really uh, kind of like merging with what what they are to do mm. so yeah I mean definitely because people are different they are treated differently because people are not familiar and often they are afraid of what they're not familiar with exactly and we can we can talk from like where we are right now because like we, we watch different things and you know, there are people who are not from Colombo, that mm. society, who might look at things from a different perspective and maybe they're not wrong, you know, they don't think that they're wrong and it's because they haven't had the exposure, it's because they don't know that you can actually empathize and be kind to people without it being wrong. Mm. So it's just that, it's just different perspectives. I think all we can do is just educate and empathize and like be compassionate, even with the people who have a different understanding and mentality. Mm. Now y'all are part of the y'all are part of many groups as I spoke before. Uh, this particular one, uh, love is love, right? That that yes. you were speaking about. Um, one of the reasons it it doesn't only speak for the queer community; it also speaks in general, um, especially because I think a lot of things have changed, and over the years we have been asked to categorize people either for Tamil, for Buddhist, or fair, tall, there's so many things that you're categorized as. Um, so one of the reasons that this project is speaking about is just inclusivity. Um, do you see that changing now with so much of information thrown out there? I do see it changing. Technically, yeah, from a wider lens, yes, things are changing, but if you narrow things down, there is still, you know, people are still being con and people are still being discriminated. But I definitely think that things are going in the right direction, the right direction being like people are being more accepting, people are at least trying to understand, even the older generation, I've noticed that maybe not all of them are accepting, but at least some of them are trying to understand, maybe because their children or like their children's friends are from maybe the queer community, maybe, maybe from a different community than how they are. Mm. I think people are being more accepting, but of, of obviously things are slow, but I think gradually things are going in the right direction. Now, do you feel women who are <coughs> out there speaking loud, proud, and having an opinion that is very strong, must be creating a lot of conversation where you all might have got messages personally <laughs> or even as comments. Uh, tell me about these type of experiences. <laughs> yeah. um, as, as soon as you have an opinion, as soon as someone knows that you have an opinion, uh, you know, there's going to be negative commentary at all times, regardless of whether you're black or white or, you know, woman or man or whatever. But when it comes to a woman, if, if someone knows that you have an opinion and if it's different from theirs, 
there's going to be negativity. But personally, I think that people treat social media or like public platforms as like their form of therapy because, mm. you know, they're just venting online. So who who sort of has the opinion? Who, have, who seem to be the ones with a stronger voice? Women or men who comment when it comes to negative or even trolling? <laughs> <laughs> trolling... Personally, um, it's less women, I would say, but then that's what I've seen that's personally on my platforms. Maybe, I don't know, I strike a, the wrong nerve or something. I honestly, I don't come from a bad place. D just the things that I say, maybe it's coming off as hating men, but it's really not the case. If someone's being cornered, if someone's you know, being looked at differently, and if it's a man, I'm all for that person. I, re I don't care if it's a man or a woman. I really don't. So um, I, I don't know. Maybe people think differently, and I think differently. It's just that it's just negative commentary. I think that people are just venting online. How is it for you? Um, I wouldn't actually be able to break it down to men or yeah, women. women. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be difficult because especially it's the it's the mob, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a big <laughs> big blob of yeah. people. We don't really know uh, if it's a man or a woman, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think people differ so much as men and women. I think yeah. it's just a you know the person times, thing. Most times it's a name and a number. You really exactly. don't know yeah. if it's a man or a woman. Really so what do they say mostly about the fact that you all have an opinion and you all are out there speaking about it? Um, they would call you. I don't know. Personally, they would call me like a like a hater. Or you don't care about the society. Or you don't respect people. But for me, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying mm. to be respectful. Just that people are not so respectful towards children. They think that elders should be respected by default, and I personally don't agree with that notion. Um, but yeah, people yeah people come with different different words every day. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> How is it for you? Uh, in my case, honestly, like it's not a lot of like specific hating on what I'm saying. It's yeah. just they try to deflect and attack the, you know, something that I might be insecure about. You know, I get a lot of like, oh, if, if I say something that they don't like, it's immediately like, well, you're ugly or like something <laughs> like that. It, that tends to be, I get a lot of deflection, things like that. <laughs> but, you know. But, but no, that means they are paying attention to the content that is given. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But just the counteract is just going to be. Yeah. And I think that's why we should at least try and say something of use. And I mean, that's what that's what I try to do with my content. And I know that that's what Dimitri tries to do with her content also. Even if you're talking about something funny or a skit or something stupid as a whole, we try to give out some something. meaning, some mm. something behind it. Something. Actually, we were having this conversation just earlier and we were thinking we're coming from a good place. Our intentions are good, but when has that ever been? <laughs> I mean, wh when has anyone ever taken that into account? Yeah. yeah. It's always uh, however well you execute it, there's always going to be somebody trying to say otherwise. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, you just take it as it comes. And when you, ha when you have a, like a public platform, it's just, it's expected. True. We're getting into a break. We'll see you on the other side. Do stick around. This is a day with Dhamma. Welcome back to the show. This is a date with Dhamma. We are speaking to these two ladies. I thought let's break the flow a little bit and have a little competition because it's always fun to do it. All right, here we go. Do you believe in existence of heaven and hell? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't <hate me>. I know. <laughs> Have you seen people trying to be like everyone else just to fit in? Yes, but because sometimes it's because people just don't know better, and sometimes over time people figure themselves out and. Yes. And they yes, and I'm sure I've done this also. Yeah. Especially as a young adult, I've definitely tried to fit in. Mm. Like what? To Britney Spears? Um, or like yeah, your at, at times. Mm. Uh, why not? And but uh, your peers, like who's cool in school and you yeah, want to be like that. Exactly. <laughs> I couldn't even pretend, man. I was so not cool. <laughs> we tried. Because so. you're authentic from the no, start. No, I, <laughs> I was so authentic that only a mother could love me. <laughs> 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 Have you ever overheard something you wished you didn't? Oh, gosh. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Elaborate. <laughs> uh, do you think people should show affection in public? Oh, 
personally not a not a PDA person, but it's just me personally. I love when people show other people love. Great, good for them. But personally, I'm like, still. <laughs> You are the same? I also kind of want that. Okay. Yeah, but this doesn't apply to yeah, other people. It's, uh, yeah, this is just <laughs> like Don't be politically one. correct, just move on. Cringe. Do you think our lives have a predetermined outcome? Um, I like mm. to think that's the case. Just yeah. I love the idea of destiny and, you know, things yeah. align for yeah. a reason. But I don't actually think that's the case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I what an intro to an exit. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I try to I try to believe in like manifesting and like trying to get what you want, you work real hard and you can get it, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Still figuring it out. <laughs> but I, I also I also have a caveat to the to the heaven and hell thing by the way. Um I I I I'd still listen to Stop people. explaining yourself, that's no. just your opinion. No, 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 I feel like I should say this because mm. I still listen to people who are like religious. I have friends who are like, mm. like utterly like devoted like religious people. And I think there are great lessons to learn in every religion. Of course. Yeah, so I'm not a, I'm not a hit religion yeah, kind. It's just, it's just a personal thing. And I would love to hear people out, especially like I have friends who are like Catholics and like Muslims and Buddhists. I'm not, I'm not practicing any of these religions personally. But I would like I really do think that there are lessons to learn in all of these religions. <laughs> Have you ever binge watched an entire se TV series in one day? Oh, every day, all the time, whenever really? possible. Yeah. I I'm not as an adult because I don't have the time, but I would love to. But and I have in the past. Mm. I did like. I can't. You can't. Maximum I can see through is 15 minutes. Really? Oh, then I have yeah. to get up, go walk around, come back, or like come back the other day. I'll watch a film for like four days. I've done this, yeah. yeah. I it just irritates me to like be in one place. Oh, I oh, anyway, I think maybe for you and I can never like yeah. you know share a room. It's just going to be really hard. <laughs> uh, we're getting to a break. We'll see you on the other side because we need to speak to the ladies about what keeps them together. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. In conversation with Dimitri and Ganguly. All right, now. If you didn't know about what they actually do in terms of being relevant, uh, they have uh, very highly uh, recognized public platforms. Let's start with Dimitri. She starts all her videos saying, hello, Lamaini. Uh, and, and tell me, when you started, were you like, an inst like a TikTok person? I really w was not a TikTok person. It was, I started during the pandemic, the lockdown. Right. Yeah. Bored person looking yeah. for something to do. I also started TikTok at that time. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think a lot of us have that in mm. common. But yeah, that's, I wasn't a TikTok person. And what made you be so authentic? <laughs> like, so authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's mostly because I didn't have a plan. I was just ranting at, in the beginning. It was right. like nobody was looking at me. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can say whatever I want. And then slowly people started. You know. Getting on your radar, yeah. and I must say I really love your content. You. you being uh, like, I love the fact that it's so real and it's so relatable. Like we we'll all go through that problems in life. Um, a lot of people like to have the filters on and you know have the pictures stomach tucked in a little bit and all those stuff. But you seem to really embrace the authentic, original. This is how I came. Kind of a look. Tell me all your problems, all these things that you share in public. Have you ever sat back and thought, oh, I'm just sharing a bit too much of information? Oh, no, definitely. I do have that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, when the comments are like, why are you saying this? You know, like, um, what is it? I think Apito Moko. That gets, that's very common. Oh, those people care the most. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, you know, when you hear that, you're like, oh, why did, actually, why did I that's say right. that? Yeah. Uh, you have openly spoken about periods. Uh, how was that accepted on social media? It was, um, honestly, actually, I would say it was like not, uh, not as bad as I thought it would be. If you actually look at my comment section, it's not too bad because yeah. mostly it was a lot of women hmm. who were, it was reaching and they were actually just grateful. They were just happy to see that this, there's an alternative. Hmm. So thankfully it hit the right audience. <laughs> now you have spoken about Tamame Baggy Uttalaya Vanna Kale. Yeah. Um, tell me about that <coughs> mindset. Like even women, when they go and purchase, yeah. they seem that it's not something that they want to speak openly about. 
Yeah, it's so weird because like women most of their lives at least once they've used a pad in their life and I'm like coming from I come from an all girls school and even inside the school where never like talk about I'm it. sure there was only like a two to five men at most in the entire building we used to still like hide our pads mm. and like like smuggle it like <laughs> drugs because because it's just not accepted and as a as a kid I also used to do it myself and now I'm like why like Correct. it's 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 not illegal yeah. it's something that we had to use at least at the time and uh, now i would advocate for anyone to just use it as is because it's just it's a need yeah yeah Do it is like that yeah i mean it's pretty much it's a bodily function it is bodily it's just function. like going to the washroom yeah. Yeah. women just have periods yeah. and yeah. you yeah. can't control it. it i've seen some people be like why not hold it you Is you can't you can't hold your period oh guys oh my god that is blowing my <laughs> mind yeah. but the other point is now when when somebody speaks out about issues social messages <coughs> or like constant things that we tend to not talk about up all these women of course on instagram just <laughs> ranting and just not stopping uh have you all come across accounts that you all have been like oh, i don't want to deal with this anymore hmm yes I've definitely come across accounts that are like Because there are two reasons why it's done. One, authentically you want to do it because it creates conversation, it creates a message and you want to have that going out there. Yeah. Then you have the others who want to just fit in and they're like then it becomes like like a drama. How do you sort of differentiate? The thing is I understand people wanting to fit in because like you said before like the commentary is going to be absurd from time to time so I understand why people don't want to get into that drama I call it drama because it really can be dramatic um so I understand why people want to like stay away from these these topics that are a little controversial but personally I think now that I have like a decent following and I know that at least a couple of people actually genuinely listen to what I say I really do think that I should talk about something of substance because you know I, i i may be able to change someone's mind for the better at least i don't want to like manipulate anyone but i'm hoping that i can put someone in the right direction at least one person that's that's always my mentality you also sing i also sing yeah. uh <laughs> that's your first that was your first love that was my first love because i come from a family of musicians correct so um yeah it was definitely my first love i'm sure that i've listened to music in my mother's womb i have no doubt and uh, it just it suits me it calms me down and mm. i think of it less as a job and more of like love like you said do you still perform i still perform i still perform during the week weekends because during the weekdays i have a full time job Correct. and like i have like social media and things like that but during the weekends i perform at like different restaurants and hotels and things like that uh has the walpola name helped <clears throat> um nepotism has not helped <laughs> but because <laughs> it was just personal choice i don't usually um stick with my like my family music like singhala music yeah there are people who do that perfectly and i'm not one of those people so i mostly stick to like english songs and english music by personal choice but you could have easily gotten into the industry <clears throat> um yeah i would yeah. think so i've gotten invitations it's just it's not my thing it's not my vibe and there are people who do it so well and i don't want to touch on that <laughs> uh to those who are watching uh there are all types of influencers out there who promote different elements products you name it tell me what are the things that a young person should be aware of when they put that camera on and when they speak <coughs> do you want to go first um, sure yeah i think if if from the point of view of somebody who's actually doing the promoting uh i think we should keep in mind that if you are being performative like if it's a performance your audience will feel it they will know for sure so there's really no point in i mean maybe it'll get you somewhere for a while but like th- they'll know and and if your idea is to pull, um cultivate like a a genuine connection with somebody it's always good to be honest and to make sure that you don't um embellish too much hmm. <laughs> You don't have to be negative but like you you don't really need to embellish people are going to know like she said yeah oh, well uh thank you for being on the show i really wanted to speak about the inclusivity that we need to promote and the fact that the lives that you all live and the type of people you all meet yeah. from all walks of life sort of create that balance uh and also i think it's very important that we teach uh the youngsters 
the importance of being inclusive yeah. uh, and understanding no matter what. Uh, and I think conversation begins there. And if you do follow their content, you'll be able to see it. Uh, it's always nice to have young people who have different mindset and also who, uh, who have used the modern platforms that we have for greater causes. And thank you for joining me on this and speaking about it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Of course. It's always nice to see you. And you're such a great host. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but I know that people on social media are going to be like, what are these two women going to talk about? Mm -hmm. They're not even from the community. It's, it's because, uh, personally, it's because I'm not from the community. I would yeah. love to be an ally and I would love to be empathetic. You don't need to be from the queer community to speak for the queer community. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's even more important that someone who's not from that community yeah. speaks for because them. Because it's very powerful when a man speaks for women's rights. Because exactly. Because you know that it's coming from a different opinion and also a different gender it's more powerful exactly because i'm not personally criminalized for my sense of being so if someone else is trying to criminalize someone else for their sense of being i think it's important as an individual that i try and stop that at least hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I did want to say, like, you know, uh, I saw today in the morning someone had said, you know how we ask a question, what if your son, we always try to relate to what if your son was this, or yeah. what if, let's say if you're talking about gay people, then if, like, what if your son was gay? I think we should stop asking that question. Like, your empathy should not be limited to your immediate relatives. Mm. I think we should be able to just open that up That's to true. everybody. Correct. And it's, yeah. And uh, there was this one statement that uh, during the Pride Month in Colombo, uh, when a lot of things were going down. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you think representation of the queer community was done right? Oh gosh, I, I really don't think I have any expertise in this, but uh, maybe you know better. <laughs> May I ask what, 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 what incident are you With to? all the events that took place okay. for the Pride Month. Mm. Was the queer community represented the right way? Mm. I, I, now, the thing is, there are a lot of uh, pride events happening around the island, so I would, I'm not aware of everything. But, but for the ones that you might have seen or been at? For what I've seen, I think so, because it is done from the community for the community, from what I see. And I think it is. They try to, uh, if, you, if you look at the whole roster of events, it's actually very inclusive. It's a lot of people from around the island. They try to include as many people as possible. I think that I think it it, it does represent the wider LGBTQ community. From as as someone who's not from the community, I thought that it was well represented. But I'm sure there are a lot of nuances mm -hmm. within the community that I personally don't understand. But as from like a wider lens, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, in terms of legal aspect, where are we right now? Um, I can just say what, what we can say right now with the current context. Uh, I think everyone is well aware that there was a Supreme Court decision in support of the private members. That's right. So there was a private members bill that has been proposed by MP Dolawatha, who, uh, the, which I think um, the community and myself, I'm very grateful to uh, Mr. Dolawatha because I think he's taking some heat right now mm. in, yeah. in Parliament because of it. But still, he has gone ahead and, and this, this, um, this bill, if, if you don't mind if I go into a little bit of yeah. detail. So this bill was proposed and it was challenged in, 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 in the Supreme Court. And once it was challenged, a lot of petitioners, that truly a large uh, number of people, I think it was 12, I'm, I'm not too, uh, I think it was 12 petitioners, they came in to uh, challenge that, uh, the opposition to say that no, this is in fact constitutional, it is not against the constitution to repeal these laws and yeah. to, to, re, uh, to decriminalize. And uh, the Supreme Court thankfully agreed and the Supreme Court has given a special determination which says that yes indeed, to decriminalize it is not unconstitutional. So now we have that decision and now it is with the legislature to make that decision yeah, as well. But that's all that happened mm -hmm. and people and even like news channels seem to be misinterpreting this saying that oh now gay people can marry. It's, it's, that's just not it. Yeah, it's, it's not even still decriminalized. It's still in the process and but it's a big step. It's a great uh, from, big from step. where it was. It is. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap things up, I have to tell you this one particular video that I saw that really touched me. Um, this mum who is, it's, it's a content is from India, who spoke about her son coming out to her and she said, eventually she says, for him it was just one day for him to 
come out to me and it was one day for me to hear that. Whereas for him, for a day he might have to come out five times. So I need to be there for him at any given time. Sometimes it's uh, just like how curious the aunties that you portray can be. Everyone is curious when it comes to something that they can ask about and sometimes they just don't have filters. But anyway, it's great that we were able to talk about it. Thank you for the work that you guys do. Um, if you have any uh, points that you would like to connect with them on, please do. Their social platforms are open. We will see you soon with another episode of Date with Danu. Till then, you keep smiling. Bye.